Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the Hummingbird Hub, mm-hmm. uh, the podcast that looks at conscious relationships and consciousness and awareness to everything we can possibly put our focus on. Uh, my name is Alex Roseman. And I'm Julia Fitzsilva. Welcome, guys. And so today we're going to be discussing what it's like to be, should we say, confined to our bedrooms and think about what we've done. Um, <clears throat> so in our houses, wherever you are watching this right now, it's a different situation, I'm sure. But for here in Cyprus right now, um, you know, we're in self-isolation and we're allowed out only for very, very specific things. But the rest of the time, 90% of the time, we are home, maybe more than that. So from being in this situation, uh, we've stumbled upon... Um, a game that we are using to help um, to help the children. And we have two young boys here, seven and ten. And I've been thrown into this situation from the universe, from whatever you want to call it, where four months ago I was uh, not at all in uh, this uh, position. And in the last few months, we've been living under one roof, with two children, anyone who has children of their own will relate to the new challenges um, and new appreciation for teachers, for basically anything, any club that you can go here, children go there, and you, you know, obviously have your own time. But when you're not able to go anywhere, we are in a situation where, you know, we are faced with being the teacher, with being the the moderator. Major, moderator, parent, friend, the best friend at school equivalent, whatever it might be. We're the taking, bully. Uh, the no bully joking. sometimes. <laughs> uh, taking any dynamic we possibly can uh, to create sort of normality in a very <clears throat> abnormal time. We are living in the times when uh, I don't remember in our generation to ever having to face such a setup where the children are staying at home non-stop. So as Alex has rightly pointed out, you, you become their teacher, you become their friend, you become their moderator, you become their, you are their parent. And um, there isn't systems like schooling that they could just get away to or the afternoon activities that could dilute that time, right? And um, so we found ourselves watching and observing At first, having to fall back to the old habits where the children would have their iPad and their, say, leisure time a lot more easily available, um, that, that it actually created an expectation from them that it is given to them whenever they're asked. And that created a certain, a certain attitude of entitlement. And we could easily translate it and draw parallels to an adult world where I know a lot of adults that are still like that. And um, having watched that and realizing that we have 24 hours per day, but where do those 24 hours go? Because we feel like we're constantly having to manage them. Well, it feels like when you're forced into a situation, we're all adjusting right now. And I'm sure this is not going to be the new normal. I really hope not. Um, But it's your ability to be able to adapt to change. And from this situation, I saw, see, my mind works in a way that, uh, you know, I'm kind of, uh, I don't want to keep repeating myself. I'm not someone who wants to keep reacting, uh, uh, you know, each day the same thing. It, for me, that seems like insanity, where we all probably feel like we're going insane, right, at the moment. So looking at it, I'm thinking, you know, we're observing, going, right, why not create a system, rely on this system so that, the children know the rules of the game because there's a game out there. And if you don't know what the rules are, you sort of react. You're not, you don't know where you sit in it. You don't know where you sit in the game of life. And I've always looked at it that the relationship you had with your childhood is what you have with life. And the relationship you have with your parents is what you have with the world. So I'm going by that sort of ethos that, well, let's cultivate in this situation something that they can, um, we can cultivate individuals who can leave from here later on with values, with, with a a core sense of, um, sort of an identity to, 
knowing who they are, knowing the appreciation of things, just the value and the, the idea of value, the value game, because when I was going through my very struggling times, I was thinking, why am I struggling so much? You know, the, the, by offering value, get um, value points back and we can determine it as money, right? Because obviously what you do, Bill Gates gave a lot of value to the world and it was reciprocated back. I'm watching his documentary at the moment. So with this in mind, it's like, how do we cultivate that with children in a place like this, where at the moment an iPad or anything like this is sort of there, they can play with it. And then they do their homework and whatever else. There's no, it didn't feel like there was much structure to it, right? A system or it just felt very sporadic. They didn't know they're always coming to us. Mm-hmm. And it feels very much, well, kids manage yourself, but how do they know how to do that unless they have a system to um, bounce off, to know what the rules are. So we created something called the value game. Mm -hmm. And the value game was to identify how everything has um, points to it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure parents would find themselves maybe struggling with their children's homework. And it's more of the fact, not that they don't get it, it's their resistance to it. And how they how they fuss to things, and how it can trigger you as an uh, as a parent or adult, and how um, going to bed is always a chore, and you notice it's the same thing, right? And as parents, you might be making threats, and the children laugh at them because they you know you never follow through. So you're thinking, how? What do I? I've got nothing to just basically make my life easy, and ultimately make their life easy. So the, the idea is using the, the innate um, human part of ourselves, uh, moving away from pain towards pleasure aspect. Mm-hmm. The value game seems to encompass everything mm-hmm. so far from what we've observed because it gives the children the idea of valuing what their, their playtime is, uh, valuing what they're looking to exchange their points for. And we saw it straight away. Um, and they start to see, actually, you know what, I, and also delayed gratification because, and we'll explain a bit more in the game um, as much as we can. But the idea of delayed gratification, I think we mentioned this before on the last podcast or a few back, about the marshmallow test mm-hmm. and about how the children who delayed gratification, as in delayed, were able to wait for the, person to leave the room and come back without them eating the marshmallow when they were in that room by themselves they would get two marshmallows and and the children who would delay gratification then were doing better in life later Mm -hmm. compared to those who just couldn't resist so under observation here we're helping them to see that if they delay the gratification of spending those points in that day and we'll explain what it all means so we're hopefully not losing you too much that if they don't spend all those points um, on their games and they, they can actually use, use it for bigger rewards, right? And it's also, it's just making me realize the concept of paying yourself first. Now, um, I've, done, I've read a lot of books and, and done seminars um, and The Richest Man in Babylon was a book that really sort of put it in perspective about how to pay yourself first because we, we seem to be in a situation and maybe you're in a situation financially and this may really help to sort of understand that if you want to pay your bills and you pay everyone else first rather than yourself what is there left it's practicing the art of valuing yourself first beyond anything else because if you start to practice this and you every wage you get however way you get paid and you put 10 percent, whatever you can put aside to yourself you're showing that you appreciate yourself and you've done the work. You pay yourself first before you do anything else. And I call it the financial freedom account, whatever you want to call it. You put it aside and you just don't touch. It's like your, your golden goose that will soon be big enough to lay the golden eggs right in the future. So but I learned this very late in life. I wish I'd learned these skills as a child. Now, what this is doing and what we can teach through the value game is them being able to put a percentage aside for the bigger things. Mm-hmm. So they're already cultivating us now, rather because they're not going to learn it from school. Yeah, They're not going to learn it from college. And they're certainly not going to learn it from when they get their job 
depending how the future looks. Um, this is skills that's our responsibility to one, learn ourselves and go, right, I want to share this knowledge onto the, onto the children yeah. so that they're not paying the prices um, that I had to pay and missing out on future things like compound interest with index funds. And I'm not here to confuse you guys. This is about practical sense in order to create wealth and a cushion for times like this. You know, they say, say for the rainy days. Well, you could say this is a heck of a storm. Mm. And this is a time we go, you know, if I paid myself for over 15 years first, I would be fine through this time. In fact, I could take this as an opportunity. But because children, as children, I wasn't um, <clears throat> taught the fundamental skills of this. Um, I've missed out on a lot. Um, but it's okay, I'm not looking at the past to resent. It's like, okay, it, it shows to me that what is needed to learn. And the value game, it shows not just um, for them to see the value of points in things and their behavior, but it also shows the long term. I'm looking at the long term of this, not just because it's the short term. We don't know how long this is going to be, right, this lockdown. But also when it, life gets back to normal, as normal as we decide it to be, um, they will go to school and come back. And I want them to have this essence of the game, everything they do. Because when it gets to normal, I want them to understand the value of things and they have a choice. However, they decide to do it and they rely and they know the system that they can look after themselves. Because I don't look at them as, you know, children who don't know anything. You know, we're, they're little people funneling, channeling, whatever's going on. You know, um, they're more, they are intelligent in their way. And however you decide, it's like a blank canvas, however you perceive them to be, they will probably be that way, right? If I see them as little geniuses running around and they'll get it, I'll behave in that way and they will ultimately get it, mm -hmm. right? Because whoever has the most certainty will win. Mm -hmm. So my certainty that they can certainly is um, overpowering the fact that they, they think they can't. And they picked up on this game really quickly, haven't they? They have. I think the, the, the fact that they know they've earned it um, makes a difference because then they uh, value it that much more. It, it brings us back to the whole entitlement thing, you know. They they know that that um, by putting some effort into something, it gains that much more value. Otherwise, it's almost like a waste, a waste of a waste of whatever's coming to them that doesn't get valued. So I believe everything um, in life is gaining its value according to the appreciation that we give it. Yeah, and you know, it's, you see that as us as adults as well. If we, you know, you can see us as all being big kids, right? And we somehow go, oh, we've got money, we, we can do whatever. How much better does it feel when you've earned the right to play? Yeah. You know, in the morning, you do your, your stuff you got to do, you do whatever it is, and then you have that time for yourself if it's whatever it is, the evening, dinner, going on holiday, and... You, you feel like you, because you've earned it, it just it, you feel the appreciation of it so much more, right? And it's true that whatever you, if someone gives you something for free, people don't generally value it as much, right? Yeah. You know, but if you paid for something, um, and the more you seem to pay for it, the more you value it, so the more energy you'll give to it. It's it's the effort. It's mm. the effort that you put. It, it's this is how actually life is, and having to. Uh, show children that this is how the world works, that you need to put an effort in order to get something out in the sense, in the sense of um, how much focus you give something, that thing grows, right? So it wouldn't be serving them very well thinking that, oh, okay, well, here at my parents' house, I can have iPad when I want, and I can have the snack when I want, and I can yeah. do what it is that I want. And then actually, you know what? Since I don't get what I want, when I want it, I can just kick up a fuss yeah. because I deserve, or I'll, I'll, I'm, I should be having that, right? And, and it's so true because parents then don't know how to deal with that, and then they just meet in demands of them because they just want an easier life. But, the but then what are you is, cultivating? Exactly. The problem is, is that people take it with them to the real world. Mm. It doesn't serve them in the long run when they come into the world and they get a rude, rude awakening. 
about the fact that things actually don't come as easily as they thought. And you know what? Your entitlement means jack to somebody else because, or, yeah. or to the system because you, you know, you, you, you don't have that privilege that you think you have at home. Yeah. So, so because I've seen it, I've seen it happen with adults and I've seen adults kicking up a fuss and, and, and really acting so entitled where they really have no reason to do so just because they're still living by that model they had at home. Well, because the relationship they had with the child is how they still function. They, they, for people who are not willing to awaken and sort of see, actually, it's not their fault. They're not to blame it. It's actually, I need to look at myself here. You know, I, I'd rather rather not have the children under our responsibility have that hard awakening mm. and have it hard out there because we wanted to make it easy here. Oh, kids, you know, they should be able to play all the time and have fun. A hundred percent agree. But if they can learn how to play and have fun through doing homework, through doing the chores, um, these are the skills I'd rather see cultivated so they actually can just deal with it and deal with how they feel about it and, and enjoy every, from minute to, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. And I, and I see the little one, how he is with homework. And I'm like, look, you say you hate this. Imagine you decided to love this and you chose that mass was something that you loved we made it fun. Then there'd be nothing to interrupt your joy throughout the day because you've chosen to shift your perception. Mm -hmm. And I talked about linking the values last time. You know, if you see that mass can really serve your, your highest values, like playing the games, um, suddenly you appreciate it so much more. So we're having to be with them. And it's all about being present with your kids. You're, they're here, but how many parents are actually present with their children, even though they're in the same room? Mm -hmm. Are their children playing the iPads or their phones? And then the parents are also playing their phones. Are there, is there any, is there any difference? Could they, they may as well be on a, in a different country, you know, because you can tell them when to go to bed and eat your lunch now. Is that quality time? Is that the time that they're going to, they're going to remember from this pandemic moment? So looking at this seemed like an opportunity. And rather than us repeating ourselves, going, look, I really believe that they can, well, we know this, right? We feel that we, they know, we feel that they can manage themselves, right? We, we, we now realize that they can manage themselves yeah. because they have their why. Yes, because they, you know, it's really weird. It's like we implemented a game over dinner and we said, like, this is a new game. And we're going to try it, try it out. <clears throat> and it was called the value game. And we told them uh, the rules. And it wasn't like rules, you must do this, you must do that. It was a, a, so they knew the game. So they can go, look, it's, it's here for you. You choose how you want to play it. And what will be presented back are points you've earned or they've taken away because you've, you know, because they know what's right and wrong, right? They know that. If they kick up a fuss about going to bed, they know that they see it from the reaction of the parents to go, oh, look, I'm not doing this again. And it's not, it's not a nice feeling. They know this, right? But there's been no, what's the recourse for this? What, what is what, the, what's the motivation? Yeah, motivation. Mm. So we've created motivation and it's all in their hands. It's not in ours. We're just the moderators of the system mm. and we're leaning more on the system. And they are loving the system because straight away they're like, um, the little one was speaking because we've got one of the rules is not, do not insistently ask for things. Like don't ask for things more than twice. You know, can I play the iPad? Can I play the iPad? Can I play the iPad? You know, it's, he, he called himself, can I, it was like, he was suddenly becoming aware of what he was saying. It's like, oh, the habit was already breaking. And it was like, we're watching kind of like, Ourselves What's going, just What's happening? going on here? Yeah, because in like two days, we have seen the difference. Uh, we have seen the difference between the kids, um, between the kids we knew and the kids that were in, I knew. Yeah. All right. And then we saw them reading more. We saw them complaining less. We saw them wanting to do their homework and actually helping each other out with their homework, spending time outside, spending time with the, more with the animals. And it doesn't seem like we didn't, we need, we even needed to ask them. They just go and look up on that board and go, okay, this, 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 that many points. Okay. Well, in order for me to play in the iPad for an hour, I need to do my homework. I need to do play, play outside. I need to, yeah. so it kind of gives them that, 
guidance that is, is now, they have that reward in mind. They have, so it's not actually like, oh, you know what? The iPad is not going to come whenever I want for free. No, I have to earn it. earn it. And they see the value of the time they have with it. So they appreciate like, oh, the points, if I exchange this many points, I get half an hour on the iPad. If I exchange that many points, I get an hour on the iPad or this toy or that toy. So suddenly they're like, hmm, what do I want to actually do? I'm gonna willi- am I willing to spend those points on this? Am I- and they know that if they... And it's re- it is odd because they're suddenly going, oh, I'm, I want to read another book. And suddenly we're thinking for the first time, they're sitting down and reading a book on the couch like this. And they want to share it with us. And now we say, look, to earn the points of the books, you know, write down five takeaways that you've learned from it. So we're cultivating the idea of reading and remembering, you know, not just reading for the sake of reading. It's like, mm, what did I actually learn from this? So it's kind of extra homework, but it's not. For them, they see it as I'm earning points. It's like they kind of been asking for this you know when you don't when you have something at any time you want you just don't appreciate it but now they're like oh i get to play for an hour their whole perception changes and suddenly it becomes uh the treat they know it's a treat Mm -hmm. they 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 get the value of and it was really funny to see um daniel who he said oh seven o'clock there's this computer game thing image going on like uh they cast it from the usa and everyone jumps on it and we go okay sure but it's gonna be uh 10 points to go on it's like ah oh, it's not worth 10 points mm-hmm. so he's like and we're going wow okay so he didn't think it was worth the 10 points and then they have a choice to either you know they're like do you want to play now do you want to earn more points and sometimes they you know it's like oh um what else can i do uh, do you want any help is there any chores because in their mind, it's like they're getting to earn something. It's like being a little adult, but they get up with a childish joy still. And if we can kind of cultivate that and they get to sustain that now, when they get into the real world, it's like their, their values are sort of anchored in. They get to see the appreciation. They enjoy working for the exchange of things because they already know the value from this point. Now, obviously, we're looking in the future. We don't know what's going to happen, um, but... You know, that's the, that's the why of why we created this is to make their lives easier, you know, in, in the sense that they get used to it in this safe environment, but it's going to be like that out there in that environment. There's no being spoiled. And, and I just want to say one thing before it escapes my mind is how the little one sees uh, the old one. It seems to be ending up with more points right at the moment because, you know, you're sort of getting adjusting and he's sort of, saying, oh, it's unfair. And, well, what's unfair about it? That you get to see it and go, it's the attitude, it's how you, you accept the game or not that is making it unfair. Is Daniel doing anything that is fair or not unfair? He's just playing by the rules. And if you play by the rules and don't kick up a fuss, you're going to end up with more points. And him seeing that, going, hmm, and then stop fussing and actually playing by the rules and seeing the points coming in, he's going to be like, oh my God, it's got nothing to do with him or him or him. It's got everything to do with me, of how I perceive it. So there is no easy blame, blame, escape, excuse. There is, follow it, it's right there, it's all in your hands. And, uh, you know, go off and do it. And then they get to, and the beautiful thing is, they get to use their imagination about what rewards they would like to spend those points that they've earned on Totally. Well, would you like to show the example of that, of, of how we, what we have created? Just, just to have a, an idea of how it can be done practically. Um, this is the board that we have created. Well, I don't know if you can see it. I doubt that, that they can. Well, you might not be able to see us, but let's go on either side. So, oh, yeah. Boom. <laughs> so what we've got here, I've not wiped off too much. So, you know, this is just the concept and we are, you know, we're, we're evolving it and developing it and there's more to it than what you see right here. And it may look complicated. You might be thinking, what's going on? Obviously, there's a days here and each day when they're here at the house, um, by playing by these rules, we put the points on here. Yeah, and towards the end of the... To, to, during the day, then they get to decide whether they want to cash in their points during the day or like later on, or if they want to bring it on to the next day. So basically, it's quite simple. We have uh, one part where they're earning the points, you know, and it's with simple things like 
exercising with no fuss or brushing teeth without asking or eating without fuss. Um, well, that's quite important to say because there's points of brushing your teeth when we ask without resistance. They get two points, for example. But if they get up, brush your teeth and get dressed without us even asking, they get more points. So they're more inspired to not have to wait for us to get them to do something every morning. It saves us time. They go, oh, I've just done it all by myself. Uh, do I get the points? Beautiful. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? It obviously varies depending on the, the age of the child. When with, a, with our 10-year-old, we really don't need to really navigate him so much. He's a lot more independent, whereas the younger one does need that guidance. So just as a little disclaimer at the bottom. <laughs> um so that's the way to to earn the points. So a lot of this goes with without fuss, which basically means that they don't necessarily get to use their negotiating powers <laughs> and their negotiating skills with us because um by actually complying they then they get the rewards by and now we're talking about complying not in the, in the way that they are um, abused in any way, uh, but it is in the way of cooperating together, creating a harmonious environment. Yeah, because, you know, it's, where's pain? Where does it all come from? It's resisting, yeah? Because if you accept and just surrender and go, okay, there is no resistance, there is no kickback, there is no suffering. It just becomes this, brush your teeth, okay, yeah. nothing. And they just do it and they get to have more time to do the things that they want to be doing. So it's it kind of adds up here. With we've, we've gone up to nineteen so far, but this is something that is, as we said out loud, as we said to them, that it's something that is an ever changing in the in the initial stages of this development. So this week we're still seeing how it all plans out, right? So the other side of it is losing points. So you can easily lose points just by complaining while exercising, for example, because. They exercise every morning with us, um, not eating uh, what is given and, and fussing about that, you know, fighting with each other, um, not doing chores, uh, make, leaving a mess. So it's basically giving the consequences for their actions so, so that they are held accountable next time they think, next time they're fighting with their sibling and, uh, or leaving a mess behind they don't, they don't clean up, they are accountable for that because it comes out straight from there account yeah and then they realize they're getting further away from the time that they want to then play on a particular game um and they know it's all in their hands and you can see it in them um how they sometimes react when we go that's minus four points what you did and they go okay they just sort of they can be quite it's a I, I get fair, it i understand fair it game, yeah. or sometimes they might just be like you know as a child would do and, and sort of have these tears um because of the pain of it and it's, and, you know, you don't want to see your child in any pain at all. Um, but it's them just coping with this idea of pain and pleasure that's innately in all of us and, and how the sort of world operates outside. So them just sort of understanding and getting it, they're able to deal with it now um, and, and understanding there's consequences to actions, which there are. And I'd rather they learn it now in a safe place on little things than they're having to work it out on, you know, uh, big things that people go to prison for. You know, they get to feel it and learn it all now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so then, then they then they get their rewards. Uh, so, um, so their rewards can be playing on the iPad, on their uh, VR game, um, or say a snack of choice. Um, there is this is all very variable depending on what they deem as rewards at your home. There's also the boosters that then they can use in order to get their points quicker. Like for example, reading a book um, in a day or um, each book that we have say has different points depending on their, on their um, thickness and their age. Um, as well as playing outdoors with the animals, conscious circle. This is another concept that we practice with Alex, which is a um, uh, time when they get to. Yeah, the conscious circle, and we'll ex expand on this another time. I've actually done a little course on it um, where, you know, it's really important to see kids share their inner thoughts thoughts and feelings that the parents they know they they are listening in a safe space they'll never get in trouble because it's better to have them speak the truth 
then need to hide it in order to not get in trouble, right? So for us, it's just, it's important to give them that space so that they can know know how to explain their feelings, mm-hmm. right? It's the um, the either the limbic part of the brain. It's you know it's very hard to describe why we you know love someone or what or why we love a particular brand or whatever it is. It's I was looking at Simon Sinek's book, The Why, um, Know Your Why, and it's talking about this part that is the most recently evolved part of the brain. It's it's hard to express feelings and emotions, right? It, it's easier to describe what things are than why you like something or just feelings. So it's helping them cultivate that part that they get to share now and and we get to resolve many issues through that conscious circle time. And it goes more into using this as adults as well in your everyday life. But we can talk about that on another podcast if anyone's interested um, and, and create it to because I've seen clients who are operating by it and they are really thriving as individuals and it's, and it can be taken into families. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's so many ways that you can go, you, you can go and expand this on because it also depends on what goes in your home and what skill sets you as a parent can offer um, to kind of develop with them, you know. So um, these boosters, um, as we said before, can give them very quick rewards, like they can also decide to play on the iPad even for a day if they want to, if they've earned it well enough. But there is another thing that we... Uh, well, Alex has thought about is actually putting some points away towards the bigger goal. Yeah. So the bigger goal, depending on you um, as, you know, a family, what you can, you know, uh, afford, um, <clears throat> what you feel the children would want, we'd like to be putting it into their hands, right? So the big rewards could be, you know, if it's a um, a trip to go-karting or something near you or, a, you know, a trip abroad or Orlando, Florida, or whatever it might be. Um, so, but there's obviously going to be a lot, worth a lot more points if it's a thousand points or 2000 points, depending on how big the gift is. So then they have a choice, go, oh, I'm earning, you know, seven, 30 points a day. I wouldn't mind putting, you know, 10%, three points to the big goal and use, you know, 27 points on my playtime today, or maybe they'll use it all, whatever it is. But we're looking to maybe make a, an incentives where <clears throat> like interest, if your money's in a, an interest account, it will grow. So if they put it into the big rewards, maybe we'll match it every three months, depending on what's in there, you know, extra points. So they feel it's like growing in there without them having to do anything. So like, wow, I'm earning points in that area without me even doing anything. God, it's so much better to put it. So it's like training them understanding the future self because whatever you do in your present moment, and we spoke about this last time, you're going to meet in the future. Mm-hmm. So it's like cultivating that now so they understand, wow, I get to spend the points now. It's great. Instant gratification. I get to eat some sweets. But I, then I don't get the other things that I could be getting. And so it's and leaving it completely their responsibility in, in their hands, but making the incentive look great for the big rewards. And if they start putting the points to the big rewards, we may you know, add extra points because of just their because of their willingness to, you know, delay their gratification. And we want to reward them for making, you know, those decisions that they may not understand quite yet, but we know what they're sort of already doing for their future selves. Mm -hmm. And we want to, you know, ultimately we want to reward them in every aspect. Um, And it's never about punishment. This is just um, knowing, you know, the game of life. And this is the value game within our house and anyone else's houses around the world. Totally, yeah. And so this um, this this podcast was with the intention to share uh, what we have found in under these circumstances, and um, with the intention to make it a little bit easier on on the parents, because I hear so much from my friends and people that I talk to that have 
children that it is very trying testing times. A lot of people just resort to drinking all day uh, to kind of just numb the pain to a degree of their responsibility. Mm. So, so it's like this is the this the invitation. This is the invitation to consciously uh, use this this time, which is the only precious. Um, Time and attention is the only precious commodity that you can have. It's not something you cannot get back. As we said again, we're watching Bill um, Gates' um, um, movie yesterday, the, the series that we were watching. So time is really so, so precious, and we only have that much in a day. And uh, we can use it, we can see it as something that we just want to pass as quickly as possible so we can get back to our old lives and then kind of deal with the with the aftermath of what it was like cooped up at home without doing anything about it or this time can be used very protectively and for parents it doesn't mean that you since you have the kids in the house that you can't have time for yourselves so you can't have time for your work or for for the things that you like um although it sometimes feels like it, you can create such a perfect, beautiful balance where um, you will have that time back again just by by giving the purpose and the why to your children to use their time constructively. So it's almost like instead of having being one, uh, like, a, like a kind of um, chaotic kind of, you do this, no, do that, da, 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 you kind of separate it into into different (laughs) realities where they have their own and you have your own, but then you meet, say, at lunches and dinners and you you check up on each other's reports and check up on each other's days. So um, all of that is possible to create. Uh, All it takes is sometimes just people kind of go, I've just had enough, okay, give me the solution, or being a little bit more like preempting it a little bit more and nipping it in the bud before it becomes worse. So, um, yeah, this is what we'd like to leave you with. Yeah, because, you know, in any anything, any system is going to have teething problems. So I'm already aware of this and we are seeing it that, you know, it, any system, it's committing to it because what's the other, what's the alternative? When you suddenly see the other way and you suddenly realize, you know, it's all about the why – to see that they are understanding uh, values, they are appreciating the things that they didn't appreciate before. They're proactively wanting to play outside or read books. I mean, one of the rewards is if you eat s- vegetables, you get this many points. If you eat salad, you get this many points. Yeah. Depending on your children, right? Where you know you, you know your children, it's a way. Would you like them to improve on? Given the points to show that, right? We want them to eat more salads and, and vegetables. They are doing that because they know they're going to earn points. Um, before they would just say, no, there's no incentive. And you can say, no, you have, you got to eat them because it's good for you. What does that even mean to a child? They don't. But if they know eating vegetables helps their highest value playing games, they're going to eat vegetables, right? It's really that simple. And we don't need to make it more complicated. As much as it may look complicated, you're already doing the things out the, throughout the day anyway anchoring it to points is really is really for us it's like well let's just rely on the system let's make it work once you get it the brain gets it their brain gets it it becomes easier and easier they then it suddenly becomes automatic for them you know they've they'll manage themselves imagine that for a moment that your children are managing themselves and you you trust it because you see that they are getting uh, smarter mm-hmm. based on the effort they're putting in because they know they're going to get rewards they're appreciating the rewards that they're getting for what they're doing. They feel like they're growing, right? Um, and with all of this in consideration, you know, you felt great that they were doing their homework and they'd done it all. They're like up to speed and they'd earned the right to then go and play specific things. And it just feels, it feels like there's order in the chaos. And with that, it means that we get to go, oh, we, we feel like we're doing our thing about, imparting you know this this the skill in, in the children that they can use for the rest of their lives it's like not only are they doing the homework but they're doing so much more than that you know we realize that maybe the homework is not the most important thing in the world but it's it's what they're learning each day and what it all what it all means that's really the the biggest takeaway the biggest lesson and, and to see that in them it feels you know we're teaching them real life skills here every day so true. 
So um, thank you for being with us. Thank you. And if you're interested and you would like um, to know more about this game and you say, you know, if we do, I don't know, created a course that took you through it um, to help you maybe even put together sort of like a group kind of coaching mm-hmm. kind of thing. I mean, we're, we're, we're really expanding this. And if you're interested in any of that and you would say, you know, I'd love to have a system. I'd love to see my children want to grow and do the things that before I've been hit my head against a brick wall. Um, and you'd like to change it um, because insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Uh, this is what we're all about. We want to create educational systems, games, programs that enhance your lives.